to the 2023 CDL Tanker Practice Test. This test has 60 questions with explained answers to help you prepare for this test. Before we get started, don't forget to jumpstart that like button to keep this channel running. Now here is your CDL instructor to walk you through the questions. Question 1. A tanker endorsement is needed if your vehicle A. Requires a Class A, B, and D license. B. Has an aggregated weight of 115 gallons of liquid or liquid gas. C. Is transporting any hazardous medical waste. D. Is hauling liquid gas in a tank with an individual rated capacity of 120 gallons. The correct answer is... D. Is hauling liquid gas in a tank with an individual rated capacity of 120 gallons. A tank endorsement is required if your vehicle needs a Class A or B CDL and you want to haul a liquid or liquid gas in a tank or tanks having an individual rated capacity of more than 119 gallons. Question 2. Bulkheads are different from baffled tanks because A. Baffled tanks have bulkheads in them with holes that let the liquid flow through. B. Bulkheads have only one hole in them to prevent a liquid surge. C. Baffled tanks are easier to clean than those with only bulkheads. D. Bulkheads help prevent front-to-back surges while baffles help prevent side-to-side -side surges. The correct answer is... A. Baffled tanks have bulkheads in them with holes that let the liquid flow through. Baffled tanks have bulkheads in them with holes that let the liquid flow through, and bulkheads themselves do not have any holes. They simply create smaller tanks within the tank vehicle. Question 3. What is the meaning of high center of gravity? A. The higher the vehicle, the lower the center of gravity. B. The lower the vehicle, the higher the center of gravity. C. Tank vehicles do not have a high center of gravity. D. Much of the load's weight is carried high up off the road. The correct answer is... D. Much of the load's weight is carried high up off the road. High center of gravity means that most of the vehicle's weight is carried high off the road. As a result, rollover is especially easy if the vehicle is not maneuvered correctly. Question 4. What is the definition of a surge? A. High voltage current caused by a damaged electrical connection. B. When a wave of liquid movement hits the end of the tank and pushes the truck forward. C. Sudden movement of liquid in various directions while maneuvering a tank vehicle. D. When a wave of liquid movement hits the front of the truck and pushes it backward. The correct answer is... C. Sudden movement of liquid in various directions while maneuvering a tank vehicle. A liquid surge can be defined as liquid within a tanker, creating waves that rush to the front, back, left, or right of the vehicle. This occurs when starting, stopping, turning left, right, or taking curves. Surges can be very dangerous as they push a stopped vehicle through an intersection or cause a rollover on curvy roads. Question 5. What is one way to control a surge? A. Pump the brakes. Do not release brakes too soon when coming to a complete stop. B. Use stab braking before coming to a complete stop. Use a low gear to help slow the vehicle down. C. Keep a steady pressure on the brakes before coming to a complete stop. D. Keep a 7-second following distance. The correct answer is... C. Keep a steady pressure on the brakes before coming to a complete stop. Surges can be minimized by maneuvering the vehicle gently. One example is to apply and keep steady pressure on the brakes before coming to a complete stop, especially at intersections. Question 6. What is a smooth bore tank? A. Tankers with smooth manhole covers for easy access. B. Baffled tanks that have smooth openings for easier cleaning. C. Tankers that are smooth on the outside. D. An unbaffled liquid tanker. The correct answer is... D. An unbaffled liquid tanker. Another name for smooth bore tank is unbaffled tank. This means that there is nothing inside the tank, such as bulkheads or baffles, to slow down the movement of liquid. Surges in these tanks can be extremely strong. Question 7. A blank is permanently attached to or forms a part of a motor vehicle 
or is not permanently attached to a motor vehicle, but which, by reason of its size, construction, or attachment to a motor vehicle, is loaded or unloaded without being removed from the motor vehicle. A. Skid steer. B. Baffle. C. Bulkhead. D. Cargo tank. The correct answer is... D. Cargo tank. Cargo tanks vary in size, shape, and purpose. They can be permanently attached to the vehicle. However, if the cargo tank is not attached to the vehicle, it will be loaded or unloaded without being removed. Question 8. Never load a cargo tank totally full. Liquids expand as they warm, and you must leave room for the expanding liquid. This is called A. Density B. Outage C. Vapor escape D. Surge The correct answer is B. Outage Various liquids expand by different amounts and thus require different amounts of outage. The driver and person responsible for loading the tank vehicle must know the outage requirement for the cargo being handled. Question 9. It is important to brake far in advance of a stop and increase your following distance to A. Control outage B. Prevent skids C. Control surge D. Prevent rollover The correct answer is C. Control surge Stopping suddenly can create a tremendous amount of surge and result in an accident. Brake early when preparing to stop and increase following distance to allow for enough space to safely bring the vehicle to a complete stop. Question 10. A cargo tank can also be defined as bulk packaging which has a water capacity exceeding blank as a receptacle for a gas. A. 1,000 pounds. B. 500 pounds. C. 750 pounds. D. 1,500 pounds. The correct answer is... A. 1,000 pounds. A cargo tank is also referred to as bulk packaging, which is packaging other than a vessel or a barge, including a transport vehicle in which hazardous materials are loaded and has a water capacity exceeding 1,000 pounds as a receptacle for gas. Question 11. Drivers of tank vehicles who haul hazardous materials or waste in amounts requiring placards must add an blank endorsement to their CDL. A. X. B. T. C. Z. D. P. The correct answer is A. X. Drivers of tank vehicles who haul hazardous materials or waste in amounts requiring placards must add an X endorsement to their CDL. Question 12. A CLP, Commercial Learner's Permit Holder with an N endorsement, may only operate an blank tank vehicle and is prohibited from operating any tank vehicle that previously contained hazardous materials that has not been purged of any residue. A. Loaded. B. Partially loaded. C. Water. D. Empty. The correct answer is... D. Empty. A CLP, Commercial Learner's Permit holder, with an N endorsement, may only operate an empty tank vehicle and is prohibited from operating any tank vehicle that previously contained hazardous materials that has not been purged of any residue. Question 13. If a CLP, Commercial Learner's Permit, is issued with a tanker N endorsement, what restriction must it also contain? A. P-No Passengers X dash no cargo in a CMV tank. C. S dash no hazmat in cargo tank. D. W dash no water in cargo tank. The correct answer is B. X dash no cargo in a CMV tank. Commercial learner's permit holders are forbidden to haul cargo in a CMV tank. Question 14. Unbaffled tanks are those that usually transport a. Dense liquids, such as some acids. B. Hazmat products, such as gasoline. C. Liquid gas products, such as propane. D. Food-grade products, such as milk. The correct answer is... D. Food-grade products, such as milk. Unbaffled tanks are usually those that transport food products, such as milk. Sanitation regulations forbid the use of baffles because of the difficulty in cleaning the inside of the tank. Question 15. 
Some liquid tanks are divided into several smaller tanks by A. Surges B. Baffles C. Bulkheads D. Smooth bore tanks The correct answer is C. Bulkheads Some liquid tanks are divided into several smaller tanks by bulkheads, which create smaller tanks within the tank vehicle. Question 16. If a tank vehicle has the following special purpose equipment, ensure that it works. A. Vapor recovery kits, grounding and bonding cables, emergency shutoff systems, built-in fire extinguisher. B. Valve release kits, grounding and bonding cables, emergency generator, built-in batteries. C. Grounding and bonding cables, emergency phone system, built-in mount socket. D. Optic socket. Scully Groundhog System, Emergency Shut-On System. The correct answer is A. Vapor Recovery Kits, Grounding and Bonding Cables, Emergency Shut-Off Systems, Built-in Fire Extinguisher. Vapor Recovery Kits, Grounding and Bonding Cables, Emergency Shut-Off Systems, and Built-in Fire Extinguishers are some very important life-saving and special-purpose equipment in which the driver of a tank vehicle must be familiar with. It is extremely important to be sure that they are in good working order. Question 17. On all tank vehicles, the most important item to check for is A. Missing hoses B. To ensure that the vehicle is properly placarded C. Tire pressure D. Leaks The correct answer is D. Leaks Driving a tank vehicle with leaks can have extreme consequences. Fines can be imposed as a result. Question 18. Tank vehicles come in various types and sizes. Be sure to check the blank to make sure the vehicle's pre- and post-trip inspections are correctly done. A. FMCSA's website for updated tanker regulations. B. Company's MSDS, Material Safety Data Sheet Procedures. C. Operator's Manual. D. Shipping Requirements. The correct answer is C. Operator's Manual. Because tank vehicles come in many types and sizes and have a variety of features as well as special purpose equipment, it is important to check the vehicle's operator manual to be sure it is being inspected correctly. Ultimately, the driver will be responsible for the maneuvering of the vehicle. It is important to fully know the equipment. Question 19. Which valves must be checked when doing pre- and post-trip inspections? A. Piston, swing check, and needle valves. B. Intake, discharge, and cutoff valves. C. Gate, globe, and butterfly valves. D. Pinch, intake, and globe valves. The correct answer is... B. Intake, discharge, and cutoff valves. Mostly all tank vehicles have intake, discharge, and cutoff valves for safety reasons. It is important to know that they are all functioning correctly. Question 20. Make sure valves are in the correct position prior to A. Going off duty B. Parking the vehicle C. Having repair work done D. Loading, unloading, or moving the vehicle The correct answer is D. Loading, unloading, or moving the vehicle the intake, discharge, and cutoff valves must be in the correct position before loading, unloading, or moving the vehicle. Open valves can lead to the leakage of liquid, gas, and or dangerous fumes. Also, never drive or move a tank vehicle with open valves. Question 21. When doing an inspection on a tank vehicle, be sure to check pipes, connections, and hoses for leaks, especially around A. Gaskets B. Manhole covers C. Joints D. Vents. The correct answer is C. Joints. Joints are usually where two types of material are joined together and are usually a source of leaks. These areas must be checked extremely well during the inspection of a tank vehicle. Question 22. The first step in doing a pre-trip inspection of a tank vehicle is to A. Check for faulty lights. B. Check the tires for correct pressure. C. Make sure a fire extinguisher is available. D. Review and sign off on the previous daily inspection report. The correct answer is... D. Review and sign off on the previous daily inspection report.
The previous driver of the tank vehicle should have done a post-trip inspection prior to going off duty. Reviewing and signing the previous daily inspection report is the first step in identifying any known issues with the equipment. Question 23. When climbing to the top of a tank vehicle, be sure to use A. Four points of contact with the vehicle at all times. B. Three points of contacts at all times. C. Two points of contacts with the vehicle at all times. D. One point of contact with the vehicle at all times. The correct answer is B. Three points of contacts at all times. When entering and exiting the vehicle as well as climbing to the top of the tank, face toward the vehicle and maintain three points of contact at all times. Question 24. Prior to having a non-hazmat tank vehicle loaded at a shipper, be sure that A. The tank has been cleaned, gaskets and seals are in place, and that there are no dents or leaks. B. Manhole covers are tightly closed during top loading. C. The vehicle's engine is running to warm the tanks. D. Compartment valves are opened when loading into a compartmentalized tank. The correct answer is A. The tank has been cleaned, gaskets and seals are in place, and that there are no dents or leaks. Another important time to inspect a tank vehicle is prior to loading. Most shippers require a clean tank with a wash receipt. Gaskets and seals must be in place for safety reasons. There must be no signs of leaks. Question 25. When inspecting a tank vehicle prior to loading combustibles, A. Add applicable placards onto the vehicle. B. Be sure to show hazmat endorsement on license to the shipping clerk. C. Connect the grounding interlock to the truck. D. Open the dome cover prior to grounding the vehicle. The correct answer is C. Connect the grounding interlock to the truck. Loading tankers with flammable and combustible products presents a high risk for fire and or explosion. When inspecting a tank vehicle prior to loading combustibles, the grounding interlock must be connected to the truck. Interlocked grounding systems will complete the grounding circuit and help reduce static electricity. Question 26. Tank vehicles must be properly and thoroughly inspected. Carrying liquids or gases in a leaking tank is A. A leading cause of accidents on public roadways. B. Not encouraged. C. Punishable by a suspended license. D. A crime punishable by citations and out-of-service violations. The correct answer is D. A crime punishable by citations and out-of-service violations. Tanks that show signs of leaks during an inspection must be rendered out of service until it has been repaired. Carrying liquids or gases in a leaking tank is a crime. If caught, the driver will be cited and prevented from driving further. The driver and their company may also be liable for the cleanup of any spill. Question 27. Federal regulations state that a driver cannot operate a CMV, commercial motor vehicle, until satisfied that it is in good working order. What are some of the items that are not officially inspected prior to operating a tank vehicle? A. Paper logs, cell phone battery levels, radio transmission quality, sleeper berth area, bunk heater. B. Parking brake, steering mechanism, lighting devices and reflectors, mirrors coupling devices, wheels and rims, hoses, emergency equipment, and frame of the tank vehicle. C. Wheels and rims, flares, engine oil levels, doors, transmission controls, gaskets and seals. D. Windshield wiper fluid, windshield and wipers, properly charged and rated fire extinguisher, warning lights, and buzzers. The correct answer is A. Paper logs, cell phone battery levels, radio transmission quality, sleeper berth area, bunk heater. Cell phone battery levels and radio transmission quality are not items that are checked during an official pre-trip inspection. Question 28. The oil pressure level of a tank vehicle while idling should be A. 30 Dash 50 PSI. B. 0 15 PSI. C. 5 20 PSI. D. 60 75 PSI. The correct answer is C. 5 20 PSI. While idling a CMV, the normal oil pressure range should be between 5 20 PSI. If readings are low, 
dropping or fluctuating, have a maintenance check performed immediately. Without oil, the engine can be rapidly destroyed. Question 29. While inspecting a tank vehicle, it is important to check manhole covers by ensuring that they have gaskets and can close correctly. If not, A. Vents will not work. B. The vehicle will not be grounded. C. Hot air can escape. D. Leaks can occur. The correct answer is D. Leaks can occur. Manhole covers on tank vehicles have gaskets to prevent leaks if the vehicle were to roll over in an accident or when the vehicle bounces while driving. Question 30. While inspecting a tank vehicle hauling hazardous materials, it is also important to ensure that A. Vents are covered to prevent vapors from escaping. B. Vents are closed while being inspected. C. Vents are removed after inspection. D. Vents are clear so that they work correctly. The correct answer is D. Vents are clear so that they work correctly. If the vents are clogged and filled with debris, the venting system may not work properly, causing a backup of harmful fumes and vapors. Question 31. Prior to driving a tank vehicle with Class 1 hazmat liquid or gas, placards must be A. Properly secured to the left, front, right, and back sides of the vehicle. B. Properly secured to both sides of the vehicle only. C. Not needed if hauling less than 30,000 gallons of hazmat. D. Properly secured to the back with the shipping papers and emergency response guide in the driver's side door. The correct answer is A. Properly secured to the left, front, right, and back sides of the vehicle. A placarded vehicle must have at least four identical placards. They are put on the front, rear, and both sides of the vehicle. Question 32. What must appear on cargo tanks hauling hazardous material? A. A cage surrounding the tanker. B. Six-inch placards on four sides of tank. C. Four-digit identification numbers. D. Six-digit identification numbers. The correct answer is... C. Four-digit identification numbers. Cargo tanks and other bulk packaging must display the identification number of their contents on placards or orange panels. Question 33. The amount of dense, heavy liquids, such as some acids, that can be loaded into a tank vehicle depends on A. The type of surge that will occur, the center of gravity, the size of the tank. B. The amount the liquid will expand in transit, the weight of the liquid, legal weight limits. C. The amount the liquid will expand in transit, legal weight limits, the center of gravity. D. The amount of baffles, the length of the trip, the weight listed on shipping papers. The correct answer is B. The amount the liquid will expand in transit, the weight of the liquid, legal weight limits. A full tank of dense liquid, such as some acids, may exceed legal weight limits. For that reason, tanks with heavy liquids are often only partially filled. The amount of liquid to load into a tank depends on the amount the liquid will expand in transit, the weight of the liquid, and legal weight limits. Question 34. The person in charge of loading and unloading a protane cargo tank A. Must be the same person loading and unloading the tank. B. Must be a minimum of 100 feet away at all times. C must be a minimum of 250 feet away at all times. D. Must be sure that a qualified person is always watching. The correct answer is D. Must be sure that a qualified person is always watching. The person in charge of loading and unloading a cargo tank must be sure a qualified person is always watching. The person in charge, however, does not need to be the same person who is watching. Question 35. What is the primary purpose of a baffled tanker trailer in a CDL tanker vehicle? A. To reduce the risk of rollovers during transport. B. To increase the maximum load capacity of the tanker trailer. C. To improve fuel efficiency of the tanker vehicle. D. To decrease the stopping distance of the tanker vehicle. The correct answer is A. To reduce the risk of rollovers during transport. 
A baffled tanker trailer uses internal partitions called baffles to prevent liquid cargo from shifting and sloshing during transport. This maintains the stability of the vehicle, reduces the risk of rollovers, and ensures safe transportation of the cargo. Question 36. There are blank rules for cargo tanks transporting propane and anhydrous ammonia. A. Special attendance. B. Non-applicable. C. Non-exempt. D. Exempt. The correct answer is A. Special attendance. There are special attendance rules for loading cargo tanks transporting propane and anhydrous ammonia. At least one attendant familiar with the installation must remain in attendance at the controls necessary to stop the transfer operation. This attendant should be considered familiar with the installation only after he has been provided with a set of operating instructions for the unloading operation and has been instructed through a minimum of three full cycles of operation. Question 37. The engine of a tank vehicle must be turned off before A. Inspection by a DOT, Department of Transportation, officer B. Pre-trip inspection C. Post-trip inspection D. Loading and unloading The correct answer is D. Loading and unloading most tank vehicles haul flammable and combustible materials. It is important to ensure that the engine is turned off prior to loading and unloading for safety reasons. Question 38. Blank a cargo tank hauling gasoline correctly before filling it through an open filling hole, before opening the filling hole, and until after closing the filling hole. A. Mount. B. Ground. C. Park. D. Inspect. The correct answer is B. Ground. Ground a cargo tank correctly before filling it through an open filling hole, before opening the filling hole, and until after closing the filling hole. It is important to ground a tank vehicle when dispensing Class three flammable liquids to prevent flash fires or explosions. Question 39. Cargo tanks and other bulk packaging display the identification number of their contents or placards or blank that are the same size as placards. A. Red square on point displays or green panels. B. Blue panels or white square on point displays. C. Orange panels or white square on point displays. D. Green panels or yellow square on point displays. The correct answer is... C. Orange panels or white square on point displays. Cargo tanks and other bulk packaging display the identification number of their contents on placards or orange panels or white square on point displays that are the same size as placards. No other color options are acceptable. Question 40. When loading or unloading hazardous materials in a tank vehicle, smoking is allowed. A. Once vents and manholes are closed. B. In cab of truck. C. Depending on type of cargo. D. Never. The correct answer is D. Never. No smoking. When loading or unloading hazardous materials, keep fire away and do not allow people to smoke nearby. Never smoke around Class 1, explosives. Class 2.1, flammable gas. Class 3, flammable liquids. Class 4, flammable solids. Class 5, Oxidizers. Question 41. Before loading or unloading a tank vehicle hauling hazmat, A. Release parking brake. B. Set parking brake. C. Close the manholes. D. Close all of the internal safety valves. The correct answer is B. Set parking brake. It is important to set the parking brake of a tank vehicle hauling hazardous material to prevent it from moving and causing a spill. Question 42. Safety valves on the bottom of a tank vehicle are A. Designed to stay intact during an accident and safely secure the liquid in the tanker. B. Designed to melt during an accident and safely secure the liquid in the tanker. C. Designed to spring lock during an accident and safely secure the liquid in the tanker. D. Designed to shear off and safely secure the liquid in the tanker during an accident. The correct answer is D. Designed to shear off and safely secure the liquid in the tanker during an accident. 
Safety valves on the bottom of a tank vehicle are designed to shear off and safely secure the liquid in the tanker during an accident. This minimizes spills on roadways. Question 43. What is the purpose of a grounding system on a tank vehicle? A. Connects the truck to the ground and any charge is transferred to the ground, increasing a buildup of electrical charges. B. Ensures vehicle is grounded to metal and able to accumulate static electricity. C. Connects the truck to the ground and any charge is transferred to the ground, reducing a buildup of electrical charges. D. Ensure that the tank vehicle does not have an earth potential. The correct answer is C. Connects the truck to the ground and any charge is transferred to the ground, reducing in a buildup of electrical charges. The purpose of a grounding system on a tank vehicle is to connect the truck to the ground and any charge is transferred to the ground, reducing a buildup of electrical charges. A buildup of electrical charges or static electricity can cause fires or explosions. Question 44. What is the purpose of a vapor recovering system during loading and unloading gasoline in a tank vehicle? A. It allows the slow release of vapors into the air from storage tanks. B. It captures potentially harmful vapors and releases them into the soil. C. It captures potentially harmful vapors and incinerates them within the tank using air pressure. D. It allows the recovery of vapors emitted from storage tanks and releases them back into the tanks. The correct answer is D. It allows the recovery of vapors emitted from storage tanks and releases them back into the tanks. The purpose of a vapor recovery system during loading and unloading gasoline in a tank vehicle is to allow the recovery of vapors emitted from storage tanks and releases them back into the tanks. The accumulated vapors will then be incinerated to reduce pollution into the atmosphere. Question 45. When loading and unloading bulkheads, smaller tanks, do not put too much weight, A, on the bottom of the vehicle, B, on the vehicle steer tires, C, in the middle of vehicle, D, on front or back of vehicle. The correct answer is D, on front or back of vehicle. It is important to keep the weight of a tank vehicle balanced due to its high center of gravity and surges. Question 46. Hauling liquids in tanks requires special skills because of the blank and blank. A. Outage and high potential for valve leaks. B. High center of gravity and liquid movement. C. Weight of dense liquids and stopping distance requirements. D. Danger of surge and low center of gravity. The correct answer is A. Outage and high potential for valve leaks. Hauling liquids in tanks requires special skills because of the high center of gravity and liquid movement. High center of gravity means that much of the load's weight is carried high up off the road. This makes the vehicle top-heavy and easy to roll over. Liquid tankers are especially easy to roll over due to surges. Question 47. A tank vehicle with open valves or manhole covers can be driven A. No more than 35 miles per hour B. Only immediately after being loaded C. Never D. Only on private property The correct answer is C. Never Never drive a tank vehicle with open valves or manhole covers. This can result in spills, which can be costly and time-consuming. Question 48. Tank vehicles should take highway curves and on-ramp, off-ramp curves. A. At posted speed limit to avoid rollovers. B. Well below the posted speeds. C. A little above the posted speed limit to control surges. D. With foot covering the brakes. The correct answer is... B. Well below the posted speeds. Tank vehicles should take highway curves and on-ramp, off-ramp curves well below the posted speeds as they are at high risk of rolling over. Tankers can roll over at posted speed limits. Question 49. Liquid surge results from movement of the liquid in A. Partially filled tanks B. Completely full tanks C. Empty tanks D. Tanks with slow leaks. The correct answer is A. Partially filled tanks. Because a tank vehicle is usually partially filled, liquid has room to move about, causing surges, potential rollovers, and accidents. Question 50. 
How does a high center of gravity affect the maneuvering of a tank vehicle? A. The driver must take curves and off-ramps at the posted speed limit. B. It helps the tank vehicle to maintain stability during a surge. C. It makes the vehicle top-heavy and easier to roll over. D. The center of gravity pulls toward the center of the vehicle. The correct answer is C. It makes the vehicle top-heavy and easier to roll over. Vehicles that are high up off the road are at risk of rolling over if they are not maneuvered correctly. Question 51. What is the proper way to handle a curve while driving a tank vehicle? A. Take curve at 10 miles per hour below the posted speed limit. B. Slightly speed up before curve, then slow down through the curve. C. Slow down before curve, then accelerate slightly through the curve. D. Slow down before curve, then break lightly through curve. The correct answer is C. Slow down before curve, then accelerate slightly through the curve. Slow down before curves, then accelerate slightly through the curve. The posted speed for a curve may be too fast for a tank vehicle. Question 52. It is important to drive a loaded tank vehicle smoothly because of A. The amount of stopping distance needed and the high center of gravity. B. Condition of the roadway and outage caused by dense liquids. C. Low center of gravity and the amount of stopping distance needed. D. High center of gravity and the surge of the liquid. The correct answer is D. High center of gravity and the surge of the liquid. Because of the high center of gravity and the surge of the liquid, it is important to start, slow down, and stop very smoothly. Also, make smooth turns and lane changes. Question 53. Empty tank vehicles may A. Stop faster than full ones. B. Take longer to stop than full ones. C. Roll over easier than full ones. D. Need the same stopping distance as full ones. The correct answer is... B. Take longer to stop than full ones. Empty tank vehicles may take longer to stop than full ones, thus requiring a longer stopping distance. This is especially true in wet weather. Question 54. Skidding in a tank vehicle may occur when the driver A. Overfills the fuel tanks or understeers. B. Fails to control outage. C. Uses baffled tanks instead of smooth bore tanks during inclement weather. D. Oversteers, overaccelerates, or overbrakes. The correct answer is D. Oversteers, overaccelerates, or overbrakes. It is important to maneuver a tank vehicle smoothly. Oversteering, overaccelerating, or overbraking can cause surges and skids. Question 55. If one must stop quickly while driving a tank vehicle to avoid a crash, the driver must A. Use controlled or stab braking. B. Pump the brakes until the vehicle comes to a complete stop. C. Activate four-way flashers and apply gentle pressure to the brakes to avoid a jackknife. D. Sound the air horn and allow the vehicle to jackknife to avoid a rear-end collision. The correct answer is... A. Use controlled or stab braking. Controlled braking used to brake as hard as possible in an emergency situation without locking up the brakes. Stab braking is used to apply the brakes until they lock up. Once they lock up, the brake is released. Question 56. While operating a tank vehicle hauling hazmat liquids, the driver A. Must have the appropriate endorsements and a two-year medical card. B. Must stop at all open way stations. C. Must have a hazmat endorsement along with the tanker endorsement on their valid CDL. D. Must carry an emergency response guide for the hazmat they are hauling in the truck side box. The correct answer is C. Must have a hazmat endorsement along with the tanker endorsement on their valid CDL. While operating a tank vehicle hauling hazmat liquids, federal law requires the driver to have a hazmat endorsement along with the tanker endorsement on their valid CDL. Question 57. If a leak of hazardous liquid is realized while a tank vehicle is being operated on a busy highway, the driver must A. Quickly get off the highway to the nearest truck stop for repairs. B. Keep going to the destination and call the appropriate authorities. C. Pull over immediately and follow the company's procedures for leaks. D. Immediately pull over and pour cat litter on spill. The correct answer is 
C. Pull over immediately and follow the company's procedures for leaks. Each transport company will have their own written procedures on how to handle spills on roadways. The procedures will be based on federal, state, and local laws regarding the specific cargo. As a driver, be sure to know the laws, policies, and procedures for the cargo being hauled. Question 58. When operating a tank vehicle on wet roadways, the required stopping distance is A. Three times as usual. B. Four times as usual. C. Same as usual. D. Two times as usual. The correct answer is D. Two times as usual. When operating a tank vehicle on wet roadways, the required stopping distance is usually two times the normal stopping distance. A longer stopping distance may be required based on the vehicle's weight and speed. Question 59. While driving a tank vehicle, what is stab braking in an emergency situation? A. Pump the brakes until the traction is regained. B. Apply brakes all the way and release when they lock up. Apply the brakes fully again when the wheels start rolling. C. Apply the brakes as hard as possible without locking the wheels. D. Apply gentle pressure to the brakes until the vehicle comes to a complete stop. The correct answer is... B. Apply brakes all the way and release when they lock up. Apply the brakes fully again when the wheels start rolling. This method allows the driver to stop quickly and safely in an emergency situation without causing the vehicle to jackknife. Stabbing the brakes does not mean jamming on the brakes, which can throw the vehicle into an uncontrollable situation. This method can be used when there is minimal available stopping distance. Question 60. While driving a tank vehicle, what is controlled braking in an emergency situation? A. Apply gentle pressure to the brakes until the vehicle comes to a complete stop. B. Pump the brakes until tire traction is regained. C. Apply brakes all the way and release when they lock up. Apply the brakes fully again when the wheels start rolling. D. Apply the brakes as hard as possible without locking the wheels. The correct answer is... D. Apply the brakes as hard as possible without locking the wheels. This method can be used in an emergency situation where there is enough stopping distance to apply the brakes as hard as possible without locking the wheels. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you still need more practice, then check out these videos or click the first link in the description to get your cheat sheet, which will help you pass your CDL exam on your first try.